design, that's only that corner. Um, the rest of the plant, the design, I think, is reasonably uncontroversial, except for the point that you, about the, um, you know, the bike, uh, the bus stop. So right, and there is some question long term of what will happen with that bus stop, which is again, it's really Pace's decision. It's not our decision. So to to make build our plan around Pace and what their potential um, use of that shelter or whether it will even yeah, they exist. Said they were going to discontinue right. that route. And right. But I think, Jan, you have some commentary? Yeah, I'm not going to argue about the path through the, the uh, garden, but that there was a path originally put in there mm -hmm. because they thought it might be nice to be able to have people walk through it, and it wasn't ADA compliant, so it was taken out. So it's not like it wasn't thought of before. However, it wasn't, you know, a five-foot wide path. Mm -hmm. That's a separate issue. To me, there hasn't been enough thought on the actual landscape part of the plan with the plants that are going in. We have two different plans here. We have the, the landscape plan for the garden and all that kind of stuff, and we have our hardscape plan. The hardscape plan is pretty much cut and dry. Everything that's in there, I don't think anybody uh, you know, objects to. Um, this is still a plan that has a lot of things to consider because it's not in the final shape that the hardscape plan is. So I don't think, personally, that we should uh, vote it through. The hardscape, maybe, but not the landscape. I think we should divide it in two. What do we have to vote on today, Anthony? Do we have to approve the plan? Well, we have a number of options ahead of us. Um, I think um, you know one of the one of the things that we're talking about is our timeline for the project. Um, realistically, to get our plants in the ground so that they can take root and flourish yet this year, we would hope to do that before the real heat of the season takes place. Um, so we would like to have our plants in the ground before June, ideally, so that they can be watered enough so that they can take root and flourish. Um, in an effort to to get to that stage, um, we would need to move forward this evening with adopting a, with, with adopting a plan um, with relation to, to the plants, unless we defer the plants and, and do that at a later date, and then I think we would be looking at a 2020 installation of those plants. Um, although I would defer to the experts about the plantings in terms of where that would go, but the advice that I've gotten to this point is that that's the, that's the way that that would be phased. Um, there is an economy to scale. Um, when we're working on a project like this, um, uh, it's inevitable that um, when you are working with skilled trades and you bring them all together, you're going to save a lot of, of your resources by trying to accomplish the entire project in one. And I think that's been the motivation from my understanding of the project um, that has gotten to, to this stage because, hey, we can add these things together and we can you know, consolidate some of our costs and be responsible. Um, and that would also mean that the library um, property is only torn up at one point. Um, in this process, likely needing to be phased because we ha we're affecting the entrance of the library, which is another factor that we're considering right now, too. Um, we don't want to be disturbing the egress to the library for public access during our busiest time of the year, which happens to be our summer reading program. Mm -hmm. um, the way that the plan is proposed before us this evening, um, we have an opportunity to um, adopt the plan in its 90% stage have public conversation about the plant material, which is a small element of this project that is not related to the actual structural um, elements of it. Um, those elements would likely be um, even ordered many months from now, likely in March after we've gone through the process of hiring subcontractors and so on. Um, so there's still plenty of time to come to decision about what we would do with that plant material. Um, my understanding of what the time frame is on this project is that if we adopt the plan this evening in its current state, if we find um, that in general the 90% stage is, is fair, um, that we would be able to then move forward with um, retaining a construction manager. Um, we can work out our contract with the construction manager. The construction manager can then work with us in identifying what the bid, bid set looks like to make the public bid um, announcement. Um, sometime in January, February, we go out to bid for approximately 30 days. We collect those bids. We analyze those bids with our construction manager. We make a recommendation before the board to go forward with who our contractors are at some point 
February, March, um, depending upon how we schedule our meetings. Um, and then the ground thaws, and we have an opportunity to break ground. Um, we estimate the project will take approximately two months to complete um, um, in terms of phasing and whatnot to um, have the library open throughout the project. Um, and then we would wrap the project right before our summer reading program begins in June. The plants would take root, and it's beautiful. Um, that's one element of this. That's how we could make this work. But that's a very tight timeline. Um, I think that it is, it's entirely achievable, um, but there's, I think there's a leap of faith that we would need to take in order to accomplish that. And that's the fact that if we want to hold a public forum, which I believe we do, and we want to collect the feedback from Little Garden Club of Wilmette and incorporate those elements and expertise into our plan, um, we need to have a conversation. We need to invite the public to have that conversation. Um, because the library is a busy public place in trying to find an opening for us to have that public forum, to advertise that forum um, effectively um, so that the community feels like they are in fact a part of this process um, that they may not have been aware of, has been in progress for the last 18 months, um, we would need to hold that meeting at some point in the later half of January. Um, the auditorium is currently booked for um, January 26th. We could potentially hold a meeting on that day um, assuming we can get all the parties together, advertise that event, and get people in. Um, I would need to know whether or not, if we were to hold a meeting on that day to decide about plant materials, whether or not we would still be able to influence what that bid set would look like. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about those logistics with our key players, like potential construction manager and our landscape architect. So my takeaway from that is, <laughs> We approve the 90% as it stands, but we hold a public meeting, we hire a construction manager, and we have those conversations. Have your and with the any luck, by the end of January, <coughs> we would be able to move forward. For um, Thank you. The pause piece is that if none of those things happen quite the way we want them to, at the end of January, we would have to say, OK. We're not going to go to bid. Pardon? We wouldn't go to bid at that point. You know, we're, we, you know, we're either ready or we're not ready to go to bid. Mm -hmm. And can we put the plan in place as a whole, or do we have to limit it to the hardscape? So I think at that point, so that option one was the 90%. We move forward today. We find an opportunity to do a little bit more conversation about this. Option two, you phase it. You break it into two projects. Um, you do the hardscape, the things that we need to address immediately, um, the safety hazards. Um, and we defer the plant material, likely not installing that plant material within 2019. Um, but would the area be cut out where that plant material is going to be? Well, see, that's, that's I think, got, an so inevitability. So you'd have a big mud, mud pit if you don't. Right. I think we're, we're, going to, we're going to end up touching, you know, you can't do the hardscape without touching the turf or plant material that's around it. It's an inevitability that there's going to be some damage to that. Equipment is going to go through that space. Um, there's also, for me, one of the concerns that I have is the optics of this. Obviously, there's the money that's involved in, in phasing the project into two pieces. Um, but if there's already concern in the community that we've got a project going on, um, if we do two projects, um, for those who are confused about the project, they're going to say, what's going on? Why is the library doing the landscaping project twice? Um, but I mean, so that just means that our communications, we need to be really careful about how we handle the communications there. Um, the third option is that we defer the project altogether, and we don't end up doing it within the year 2019, and we take the year 2019 to um, completely evaluate the project and, in a, in a sense, start over. Okay. What I would like, maybe someone, can I do a motion? Can somebody else? I would like to move, okay, uh, that we approve the 90%, <clears throat> but have the meeting, and see where we stand on our thinking at the end of January. We also approve the construction manager. Ron. As far as I know, there's only one landscape architect in the room. <laughs> and I would like her assessment of what you see as the barriers and opportunities in these scenarios that have been laid out. What would you think is most appropriate in trying to listen, respond, and still manage not to create hazards or 
a mess in the on the on the property over the next several months of looking at this. Sure. Thank you for asking. So, you know, uh, as Anthony mentioned, the hardscape is going to generate quite a bit of disruption in the landscape. Whenever a sidewalk, for instance, is torn up, you have to imagine a few feet on either side of that sidewalk is also impacted by machinery. Um, there are also other components that fall under hardscape that um, would disrupt the landscape, and those things include the lighting systems, you would install under up lighting and bollard lighting, and there is an existing irrigation system out there today which needs to be amended. So there are quite a bit of underground work that needs to happen to support uh, the future landscape. So um, that said, there would be a lot torn up. Um, you know, on the other side of the coin, the types of plantings, you know, just to kind of be clear, as far as the materials that were presented tonight, it is really for the most part all native. And those native plantings um, are best to go in in the early part of the spring. We might find that if we waited until the fall, they would not be available, and so therefore deferring to the following year. Um, you know, in our experience designing public spaces, you do need to make sure that uh, the project is designed safely and efficiently, and that library entrances and operations are back up and running as quickly as possible. So. Um, we have found the most success when landscape very shortly follows hardscape. Um, the only times when we tend not to do that is if hardscape goes in in the fall, for instance, and then the following spring you have to follow up with landscaping. So what time would you, so you say early spring, is that March, April? That's correct, and so... It's when the, yeah, you just need to the same plant timeline selected that, and put them in. Correct, the same timeline that Anthony mentioned. Um, typically would not like to see plantings go in after June 15th. If we have a meeting the end of January and we can reach some comfort level with the plan, well, as a whole, um, are we and say, okay, this is it? We can, is that too tight a time frame for a spring project? I don't think so. Okay. Time for the selection of Okay, so we're good. Um, I Let me just, before we vote, I guess, I don't understand why we couldn't have a committee meeting with, I mean, there's only, you know, eight, ten people here, and there's only five or six people on the committee. I don't know why we couldn't have a committee meeting sooner than late January. And to I'm, me, to me, let me just make my point. I uh, really think we January, need to advertise yeah, this to the public as a whole. The, the you know, you guys have been, all the community. yeah, but, you guys have been really on top of this, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other people who, if they hear about it, if they advertise it, they too would like to voice an opinion. I don't know who those people are, it but would, it would. It feels a little awkward to me to adopt a plan that's 90% complete and then have a big public meeting in January where we say, this plan's baked, except for maybe the types of plants that we choose to plant. And any of the conceptual conversations that some of the members raised are, we've already voted in December. So to me, I think, I, I love your suggestion about having a big meeting. If it's late January, it's late January. But I really think the board ought to defer adopting a plan until after that big public meeting occurs. Otherwise, we're in a position of saying, we've decided on the plan, and now we're having our big public meeting, which is probably the wrong order. The problem with that is that that defers the project to 2020, period. Because in Do order to achieve, true? in order, we have lead time requirements in working with the preparations for proceeding. We don't have to make the commitment to proceed tonight, but if we don't get a construction manager engaged, and if we don't uh, approve moving ahead in getting ready for such a project, you won't accomplish it in 2019. That's the reality. So are you saying something besides hiring a construction manager we need to do tonight? What I'm saying is we need to we need to adopt the plan with awareness that there are some flex in flexible points in it that can be fine-tuned 
to address as many of the concerns as we can agree on prior to issuing the request for bids on the specific plant materials that would go into it. That won't happen before That's February at the earliest. But there, there aren't that many spaces in this lot size where you're going to be able to make radical changes. Well, there's... A you can, all right, I, I've made my point, but if we're going to have public input, we ought to wait to adopt a plan until after that public input, in my opinion. Public input was for what the planning should be and what type of activities might go in there. That was I, I, the I understand the that. logical. Let me just throw some more dates in here. Our next board sure. meeting is the 22nd. You're talking about the 20... Eighth is a possible meeting for 26. the community. Twenty six. Um, so we'll have to have make sure that if we can come out of that public meeting with some idea that yeah, this is a plan.